In this problem, we are assuming that the hammer is falling only due to the force of gravity and isn't being propelled by, say, the force of someone's hand swinging the hammer downwards. We are looking to find the amount of work that it will do on the nail. According to the definition of work, the work due to a force is equal to the magnitude of the force times the distance over which that force is acting times the cosine of the angle between the force and distance vectors. In this case, the force due to gravity and the motion of the hammer are both downwards, parallel to each other, in parallel directions, meaning the angle here will be zero. Since the cosine of zero degrees, or zero radians, is just one, we can disregard this cosine term here. This force variable here refers to the weight on the hammer, which is just equal to its mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We now have this formula in terms of variables we're familiar with. Now let's plug in the mass of the hammer, the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, and the height from which the hammer is falling. Plugging these values into our calculator, we find a work of about 5.88 joules, or if we round to two significant figures, about 5.9 joules. This is the maximum amount of work that the hammer could do on the nail if we just let it fall. The problem statement also brings up a conceptual question about why people, when using tools like hammers, don't just let their tools fall, and why we add our own force to the hammer as it falls. And the reason is because if you add your own force to the hammer, you are accelerating the hammer further and adding more kinetic energy to it. This means that the hammer has a greater capability to do more work to the nail, since 5.8 joules on its own is not very much. The more energy that the hammer has, the more energy that it can give to the nail and push it in deeper. This is why it's important to add your own force to hammers when you use them.